news story. As we mentioned earlier tonight, we have the first glimmer of hope in the fight against Alzheimer's in a long time. While there, of course, is no cure, and while it's hard to find an American family without some connection to Alzheimer's, a new study funded by the National Institutes of Health has found that an insulin nasal spray, of all things, has shown memory improvement in some patients. Research like this is a prong of the administration's effort to develop the first so-called National Alzheimer's Plan. And we get our report tonight from our chief science correspondent, Robert Fazell. What we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate for you how it could be a dramatic new treatment for Alzheimer's disease. It's very promising. We're very excited about it. We'd like to see it move forward into a larger trial. Hold it up to your nostrils. Dr. Suzanne Kraft and her team gave volunteers a daily dose of a special insulin nasal spray, or a placebo. Relax your leg as much. The 104 as participants had Alzheimer's, or like John Martin's, pre-Alzheimer's memory problems. They're going to tell the story back to me. After four months, three quarters of the people getting the insulin spray did better on memory tests. Children saw lions. And on scans showing brain changes that signal memory loss. We were surprised uh, by how many of the participants benefited. Why insulin? Recent studies show a strong connection between insulin resistance typical of type 2 diabetes and many symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Insulin helps the body use sugar, and if that doesn't happen properly in the brain, it can lead to memory loss. In this experiment, the scientists used a special device that gets the insulin into the upper sinuses, where it travels along nerves into the brain. It reaches the brain very rapidly. Uh, likely within a 15 to 30 minute time frame. The experts strongly warn that patients or their caregivers should not attempt to treat Alzheimer's using the body-wide insulin used to treat diabetes. That could be dangerous, even life-threatening. A large, longer-term study should begin in months and reveal whether this hopeful beginning marks genuine progress against a heartbreaking disease that so far has been unstoppable. Here's the device. Robert Vizell, NBC News, New York. Um, the nurses... Important story. We want to spend a bit more time talking with one of the researchers in that report, Suzanne Kraft of the University of Washington and the Veterans Administration, with us from Seattle tonight. And Dr. Kraft, while I understand that this study needs to be extended and repeated and compounded as we know more, is there evidence that it works on both established sim uh, symptoms and preemptively in patients? Well, thank you, Brian. Uh, there is evidence that it does improve memory, which is the cardinal symptom of Alzheimer's disease in patients with Alzheimer's disease, as well as in, pa in patients who have the condition that precedes Alzheimer's disease, uh, known as mild cognitive impairment. You know that people will do just about anything to try to get a product uh, and avoid the long, frustrating wait while people, people suffer and it comes uh, to market. And while there is that strong caution that people shouldn't freelance, and while I understand that there's been insulin research regarding Alzheimer's, how did someone come up with a nasal spray as a delivery system here? Well, we wanted to deliver uh, insulin to the brain without raising insulin levels in the body, as that can cause dangerous drops in blood sugar. So we took advantage of a device that's being developed by a small company here in Seattle that targets the nose to brain pathways. And through that, uh, we were able to successfully deliver the insulin. And uh, we have time for just a final word here. You must regard this as the most positive incremental step development in quite a while. Well, we have to be cautious. It is a pilot study. It is, I would say it's a first very important step, and we do need the larger, longer trial to really uh, see whether or not this is going to be a viable therapy for Alzheimer's disease. Suzanne Kraft, University of Washington, thank you so much for joining us here on the broadcast tonight. And from